no one knows how long the virus had been lurking in the highland forests of Guinea. A unique strain of Ebola, never before detected in humans. The virus is carried by fruit bats. Somehow, on December 2nd, in a remote West African village, a two-year-old child became infected and died. He infected his mother and three-year-old sister, then his grandmother got sick, then a nurse and the village midwife, a cascade of infections that started spreading to other villages, the seeds of an epidemic taking root on the borders of three formerly war-ravaged countries, countries with crippled infrastructure, desperately poor, with no resources to fight one of the world's deadliest diseases. It wasn't until early March that the chain of death was reported to the government of Guinea. Two days later, the government called for help from Doctors Without Borders. We're showing them how we dress up, which is a very strict procedure to follow, how to, how to dress, how to undress. Soon, aid workers were overwhelmed with cases. More than 100 people infected and almost 80% of them dying, leaving dozens of highly infectious corpses to bury. The traditional practice of washing the bodies spread the disease. <laughs> While fear and rumors hobbled the efforts to contain the spread. If only they could listen appropriately to our advices, we could break the chain of transmission. By late March, the virus crossed over into border villages in Liberia, and the sister of one victim traveled across the country by taxi, infecting people along the way. By April, this had become the world's worst Ebola outbreak. Yet the world took little notice. Most of the hands-on care was provided by two charity groups, the Christian charity Samaritan's Purse in Liberia and Doctors Without Borders in Guinea. The health workers on the ground warned they were overwhelmed. On May 25th, news that Ebola had entered a third country as Sierra Leone reported its first confirmed case. Within three weeks, that country had almost 100 cases with family members smuggling victims out of sight of healthcare workers and officials trying to contain the infection. This is an emergency and we are already in trouble. We are already fighting something that is, is very, very large. It is going to get a lot larger if we do not get a lot more resource. By early June, almost 400 people had died. More than 600 were infected. Yet at that stage, the epidemic was still contained because of poor roads and limited travel. But that ended on July 20th when Ebola boarded a plane. Liberian-American diplomat Patrick Sawyer flew from Liberia to Lagos, carrying the virus he'd caught from his dead sister. He arrived in Nigeria in full fever and died five days later, starting a new chain of infection in a new country, one of the most densely populated in Africa, with many international flight connections to the rest of the world. It's unfortunate that one madman brought the Ebola to us, but we have to contain it. Sawyer's wife at home in the U.S. warned Ebola was closer than it seemed. It's a global problem because Patrick could have easily come home with Ebola. Easy. Easy, Ebola. It's as close as at our front door. Within a week, Nigeria started seeing Ebola cases, including healthcare workers who cared for Sawyer. Those victims joined the dozens of other local healthcare workers who have died in this outbreak, including Sierra Leone's chief virologist, Dr. Sheikh Umar Khan was on the front line, frustrated that people were ignoring medical advice. It's about denial. It's about the negative attitude initially we were getting from our people. This disease is natural. It's nothing of a mystery. 
but simply it's a disease that somebody can acquire that. On July 29th, the sad news that Sierra Leone's hero doctor had died. But it was the infection of two U.S. healthcare workers that made international headlines when Dr. Kent Brantley of Samaritan's Purse and colleague Nancy Wrightbull were infected in Liberia. It was not until Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull were confirmed positive that the world sat up and paid attention. Attention that comes much too late, the vice president of Samaritan's Purse told U.S. legislators. The disease is uncontained and it is out of control in West Africa. The international response to the disease has been a failure. The U.S. aid workers were flown back to the U.S. where they're recovering. But their case sparked a new controversy when it was revealed they'd been given access to an experimental treatment a treatment also given to a Spanish priest who later died. Opening up an ethical debate about access to experimental drugs, prompting the World Health Organization to hold an emergency meeting to issue an opinion. There was unanimous agreement among the experts that in spe the special circumstances of this Ebola outbreak, it is ethical to offer unregistered interventions at poten as potential treatments or prevention. The next day, Canada offered to donate up to a thousand doses of an experimental vaccine. The WHO will help to facilitate distribution of the vaccine and will decide how to best use this as a global resource to help fight this outbreak. Okay. And then the last few doses of the experimental serum were shipped to Liberia. It will take months to make more. Meanwhile, the virus continues on its deadly course. Almost 2,000 infected, more than half have died. Each death, an anonymous tragedy. To deal with this every day, to look people in the eye, you can see they are scared. To look over this fence right behind you now and see, look at the patients, and you know that their chances are very small. It's, uh, it's horrible. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Toronto.